um, this coming weekend, even though you know plenty of international action. But uh, we're going to recap what we saw. Uh, we'll recap it in depth in the second half of this show, and we'll take your questions and insight at that point. Uh, we'll go over the scores real quick here, but uh, we're going to get right into it in a moment with our guest from the Chicago Red Stars, Kayla Sharples. And if you have any questions, please go ahead, uh, put them in the chat for us, and we'll try to get to those um, as we go through here in the coming moments. So, Lori, um, We'll catch everybody up quick and then we'll bring Kayla in and we'll talk in some more depth. So the weekend that was Chicago in action, uh, Kayla's team in action against Houston, a 1-1 draw. We had Orlando Pride, a big 3-1 win over Racing Louisville. And then in the CBS SN game on Sunday, Portland Thorns with a 1-0 victory over North Carolina Courage. And I dare say, Lori, feel like we, we have a pretty clear picture at this point, maybe about that shield after that result, but... Um, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I feel sweaty about that one because uh, <laughs> okay. this, this season has been wild. So who yeah. knows at this point in time. Fair um, enough. Yeah. Every prediction I make, it just goes haywire. So I'm thinking, let me do the opposite and see if it really pans out the way I actually think it will. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get into those games in depth in a little bit here. So uh, stick with us for that after the break. But First, we're going to have Kayla Sharples coming on, and we'll bring her on now. Um, excited to have her, Chicago Red Stars uh, defender. Kayla, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Yay, yeah. hi, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I guess the result on the weekend, you know, 1-1 one, one draw with Houston. Um, it's been, I, I know Lori wants to dive into this, and she just said it's been a crazy season for every team. I, I know, what's that been like? We, I feel like we've been asking players this every week, but it's just every week is that that little bit of chaos of how have you been kind of managing that? How's the team been managing that where, you know, you're trying to find that consistency and, and just the whole league has been pretty crazy this year. Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it. We are definitely trying to find some consistency. I think as the weeks go on, and as we play more games, we're finding our flow a little bit more. We're trying to connect a little bit more, especially in the offensive third. Um, and so I think with the 1-1 one, one draw against Houston last weekend, um, it's we obviously wanted a win, but to be able to claw our way back and to get that tie was really big for us. And just to get one point at this stage um, is important. And I think every game from here on out, um, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a grind. Almost every team needs a, needs a result. So I'm looking forward to the last five or six games um, and just trying to pull through and see how high we can seed. Listen, you know the season has been wild when earlier on for the Red Stars, your team was leading the league in terms of goals because of the own goals, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's just like, <laughs> listen, that was, it's been an interesting year, let's say, to say the least. Um, okay, so in general, Red Stars, you're talking about finding more consistency. How has it been for you? Um, what's this year been like? What were kind of some of the goals um, headed into this, this season you were looking at um, internally, really? Yeah, so this year will or is my third season. And so last season being the COVID season, I think a lot of people just kind of scratch that. You don't really get a whole lot of playing time. You only had about seven, eight games in the tournament. Um, so going into this season, it was just important for me to find some game time to get more experience to find that confidence. Um, something that helped me continue to grow and develop my game was I went to Finland um, during the last off season. And so I think I just kind of took, took that and um, everyone kind of noticed. I just had a little bit extra pep in my step and felt really confident. And so going into the season, I just, yeah, I wanted to help my team in any way that I could. Um, and I was lucky and earned some playing time and then a consistent starting role, especially when the Olympic players were gone. And again, just playing my role, helping my team any way possible. Um, I think that those games were really good for me. And you mentioned the own goals. I think something <laughs> that at that point, what we were in the middle of our middle of our season. And I think earlier on, some of us got frustrated. We weren't seeing the results we wanted. Things weren't clicking necessarily. We were working really hard. Sometimes we even had good games and again, just didn't get the result. So I think when we had that stretch where we were getting a lot of own goals, um, I think that's one of byproduct of the hard work and the commitment for us to get nice services in the, into the box, um, having runners in there in the spots at the right time. So I think that's finally when things were clicking. We're like, ah, oh, now now we feel like we're a little bit lucky. These are the things that we're looking for, and hopefully can stride it out as the season goes on. Um, so I think again, just heading into the end of the third of the season, um, we're excited. Again, we just need we need results. Yeah. 
Ayla, you mentioned what that that loan did for you kind of on the field. I'm wondering off the field. I mean, you're you kind of Chicago through and through pro college, even down to the, you know, growing up at the youth level. Um, you know, that's a big change in, in some regard going to Finland, but it's also at that time, you know, where at that point in that pandemic or this, the ongoing pandemic, I guess that, you know, a lot of people, um, I feel like at least personally, the, you know, the fall was still a really nervy time, not that it's not now, but, you know, pre-vaccine and that, I mean, just what was that like kind of at a personal level of making that decision, you know, at that time period and, and then, you know, coupled with that being kind of so far from home and in a place that you'd, you know, you've been for so long. I think one, the bubble was a very stressful situation for the entirety of the league. And so once um, we got out of there um, and again, run, being runner ups as well, not getting the result that we wanted. Um, I was just looking inwards and trying to find some way where I can continue to grow as a player, but also mentally. And I think um, I had a good conversation with Rory and it just seemed going to Finland was right. And honestly, at that time too, because COVID was still at its height, that we didn't even know if the fall series was going to happen. And for me, it was really important again to continue to get game time. And so that's ultimately what led to the decision of going into Finland um, and playing on Coops and Finland's in Finland's top league. So I had a really good experience. I think I set out, I accomplished things that I set out to do. Um, and I think the break from quote unquote COVID life was really nice and needed because again, the COVID wasn't really a factor day in and day out in Finland. They had it under control. They didn't have many cases. And so that it was a nice mental break in that regard. Um, and then yeah, soccer, soccer wise, it was just good to get run out and to be, again, I know Rory and I now have also played in two seasons. So just to have a different coach coach me seeing a different style of play was really, really beneficial for my game. Yeah, I was curious because you said you, you know, came back this season, there was pep in your step a little bit and um, everyone kind of noticed that. So how long were you in Finland? And can you talk a little bit about some of the differences in playing style and what was it just the minutes in general to get game time? Or was there something that you felt like you were taking away from that style of play that's helped you this season? Yeah, so I was in Finland for about three months, maybe three and a half months. Mm -hmm. um which is a good chunk of time I think that was also probably the best scenario because you're away for a good amount of time but again I'm from Chicago I love my family my friends that are here so it was the for me it was the perfect amount of time to be gone um play like playing style I think at least in my my team specifically I think that we transitioned very well which is very similar to the NWSL um our attacking our defensive to attacking transition was great I think um we had several international players on my team as well who have played on national, who are currently on the national teams of their countries. So again, just playing with different talents um, and caliber was really nice for me. I think obviously I still think NWSL is one of the best leagues in the world and it's super physical, it's fast again, transition. Um, so there were similarities, but through and through, I knew going in that my team in the league wasn't going to be as competitive as NWSL, but it was just important for me to get that consistency of game time. Um, and again, just seeing different, different presses and different movements of my, my own players, but then also my opponent and just having to adapt on the fly. That was really important for me. Well, I know it wasn't that long of a, a stint there, and, but I'm wondering, did you t get kind of a full appreciation for Finnish culture? Did you come away with anything any great memories? Any, any, we love to talk travel on the show. Did you get to do anything outside of soccer there? Um, not much. Also, I, I went towards the end of August. And so that's when the weather gets a little <laughs> cold and not, it's not as sunny. Um, and being in like the Norwegian area, uh, when you hit a scent in wintertime, there's only sunlight for a few hours. So I got pretty lucky because I think I left right before that. Um, <laughs> But so there wasn't many things to do and I was in a smaller town, but I was lucky enough at the end of my, uh, at the end of my season, one of my teammates and I, we traveled Northern Finland for about five, six days. Cause that's how much time I had before I had to fly back into the U S. And so we went to like Santa Claus's village, which is this, this is known for. And I actually sent oh. letters to like my nieces and my nephews um, and cousins from Santa Claus from there. And <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so, it, that was a lot of fun. It started snowing. So I got to experience that. The one thing though, um, that I didn't get to see, which I really wanted to was the Northern lights. 
And I even went on a yeah. tour all the way in Northern Finland and just the weather that day, it did oh. it, 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 it yeah. was not aligned for me to see it that day. Yeah. Um, okay. So one thing that we do like to do on this show too, is not always talk about only on the field. So um, Jeff and Jordan and myself know broadcast really well, obviously, and you are calling uh, big 10 network games. Um, one, awesome. How has that been for you? And um, kind of how did you get into that? And um, what's that looking like? Um, are you doing that currently while you're playing? Um, how are you managing all of it? Yeah, so yeah, I'm being, um, I'm a Big Ten Network analyst right now for women's soccer games specifically. Um, so one, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's not something that I thought I was going to do or choose like a career in that path. Um, I just got kind of lucky again um, with through connections that one of um, the directors of BTN knew my college coaches. And so they reached out to me saying, hey, are you, is this something that you're interested in? And so I went in for like a trial run, a test run. Um, in the beginning, it's it's hard one. You need to like to hear your voice. <laughs> We're, I'm still getting used to, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's definitely, you got to learn on the fly. And I think that I started in 2019. I did a few games. Then obviously this past year, the Big Ten season got pushed into this spring. Um, so I did a few games there too. And now in, heading into the fall, um, I'm doing like around five to eight. And so every single time I'm doing more and more games, I do feel more comfortable, more confident. I have great people around me, co-analysts and play-by-play -play guys that really know what they're doing. So they're, they help me. Um, and I just try to learn as much as I can. So it's been a really good experience. Um, it's something that I do want to continue to do while I still can. But yeah, that's one of the things that I'm doing while I'm in season um, and when it's possible. The the voicing is real, right? You're like, that's not <laughs> what I sound like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, and like yeah. really focusing on, you know, the analysis of soccer. I mean, I know soccer I've played since I could barely, since I could walk, you know. So that's been fun and being on the opposite side because I'm normally the one on the field playing. And so it's just a different out outlook and a different perspective. So it's cool to mentally like, and intellectually get those those moments in and just trying to continue to grow my analysis as well it's it's been a it's been a fun time nice yeah i don't think i've met someone who likes hearing their voice back so if you meet somebody I, maybe i don't know I, I don't know if i can trust them but um, <laughs> yeah do you have to put aside the uh the northwestern fan cap when you when you're on these games um oh yes a little bit <laughs> i'm always rooting for northwestern um, they have my heart um, but I got to call, um, a Northwestern game in the spring. I think that's, they were playing Wisconsin in like the big 10 tournament. Um, it was a really good game and it's just so fun to see my former coaches and my teammates because I only graduated what around two, three years ago now. So I still know some of those girls. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a blast, but I, I've always had Northwestern in my, in my heart. <laughs> Is it, do you feel like the commentating and the analysis has helped your own game at all? Honestly, since I was talking to you about this recently, um, it's a good question. I think, yeah, I think it's just in game moments where uh, you're getting pressed or you're seeing different, you seeing different things. You can see the field differently. I think like knowing when a team is pressing you in on the right side, like, you know, your outlet would be the weak side and you sometimes you don't have to look there, you know, it's just, that's going to be your outlet and different things in that regard, I think has helped my game. Um, I think the more that I call games will also be beneficial in that regard <laughs> yeah seriously it does take time and it's it there's so many lols <laughs> outside of um just hearing your own voice it's like i really said that like what <laughs> and yeah there's no backtracking and something that's been hard sometimes for me is while you're you have your headset on and you're talking your producer is in your ear telling you something really? as well and so being able to finish your sentence while they're talking to you that's been a little bit tricky uh, I'm still kind of getting my footing in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tricks nice. of the trade. Yeah, yeah. You sound like a pro already. So there you go. <laughs> um, well, we, we've been alluding to Chicago. I mean, you know, grew up Chicago, Northwestern for anybody very unaware here in Chicago, um, Chicago Red Stars pro. And I think you were telling us, uh, we haven't heard the full story yet. You said you had a funny story about um, getting drafted by the Chicago Red Stars and, and, Rory Dames is the head coach is also, you know, has tons of, of youth ties in Chicago. And um, I know, you know, you had some interaction in your youth days. So what was that like getting, uh, hearing your name called by the local pro team? And, and what was that background? 
Right. So leading up to, into the draft uh, day, one, it was in Chicago. So that was really cool that I was even able to go and experience the draft day because um, not a lot of people are as lucky. But leading up to draft day, I did just reach out to Rory because I honestly, one, I don't know. I didn't know much about the NWSL and what the ins and outs of draft day looked like. I, I didn't even think I might have been good enough to be drafted. So my I was kind of looking to play abroad, at least like the first year. Um, so I was just asking Rory more of the ins and outs, like, oh, well, how did this work? And things like that. And so he never alluded, ever, he never alluded to wanting to draft me. It was more just <laughs> that's someone that I have relied on and have open communication. So then on draft day, being, um, being there after the first round, I was actually with some of my other Northwestern teammates that were there, Marissa Vigiano, who plays on the Orlando Pride, and then Hannah Davison, who also was on the Red Stars, but she's loaned out to Finland right now, or Sweden, sorry. Um, and so Hannah and I played on Eclipse for a long time. So we've known each other for like 10, 15 years. And so we were sitting next to each other at the draft and Rory, we had a conversation with Rory after a draft or after the first round. And he was definitely alluding to the fact that like making jokes saying, oh, some coaches asked me about you guys. And I was like, don't do it. Like, don't do it or something. And just kind of, we had some banter going on, but again, it did not, it didn't seem that he was one going to draft me and then also draft Hannah later on. And so it's just something that I don't, I don't really know what it would be if he would actually tell us that, oh yeah, you might do it. So it was a shock. I mean, I was very shocked that I got drafted to Chicago, but I was so happy. Obviously, you mentioned that I'm a Chicago baby, um, born and raised. So to be able to be drafted to a coach that I have a, had experience with, and then to my home, my home city, where my friends and my family can come to games and support me, um, that it's I, I'm really really lucky. So overall, the draft day was just it, it couldn't have been better because also my two other teammates got drafted. So it's kind of um, it was definitely a day in history now that I remember. Uh, that definitely sounds like a typical Rory, uh, pretending <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no, I have no clue even who you are. And then also telling other coaches, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, let's, um, I, we want to make sure, I know you've got to go in a little bit and um, I, we've got a couple rapid fire type of, or, or just kind of off the, off the field questions for you. And we got one um, from one of our, our viewers. Um, and if you have any, send them. Very soon, because uh, we only have a few minutes left here, but uh, Ray84 was asking, and I think this kicks off a very controversial topic as someone from the New York, Connecticut area, but he wants to know where you're getting your pizza from. Ooh, Luminati's. Luminati's. <laughs> I am. <Okay>. Yep. <laughs> Deep dish spinach. That's Deep dish food. spinach. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know. Deep dish spinach. I might have to it's be sold good. on that. I'm I tell people all the time, I recommend it. It's so good. Okay. Where is, what, um, what neighborhood is that in? Well, honestly, I probably do it more. So I'm from Naperville, Illinois. Um, so just a suburb. And so okay. I go home actually quite a lot and have dinner with my family because we're all super close. And so we'll get it mainly when I'm in Naperville. Okay. Got yeah. it. How often are you going to Naperville? Well, I'm actually here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we need to, we need to see this pizza next time. We'll hold back on. Jeff, you want to go with the other question too? That'll be our um, NWSL on the on the road uh, segment, Lori. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, Sammy Rhonda. I don't know. I don't know how much free time you had on this, but maybe um, did you get to visit any cool spots in Louisville during the Women's Cup? We we went to the Muhammad Ali Center. So that oh, was, nice. that was really cool. I got a sick shirt. I wear it all the time. Um, but that was, I mean, there's so much information and just learning about his childhood and history and everything. It was, it was eye opening. Um, so I think that was probably the biggest thing that we were able to experience. Besides that, I mean, we would walk around to see coffee shops and get some food there. And so we had a, I forget what this coffee spot was called, but we went there every single day. So it was really good. Um, yeah, that was kind of, it was practice, game, coffee, and repeat. <laughs> I mean, nice. it, sounds, it sounds like the good life. So yeah, yeah really. Um, Want to do rapid fire then? To, yeah, yeah, we'll do a couple. Cool. So sometimes we do a little rapid fire, just shoot some questions at you that are just fun and then whatever comes to the top of your head. So, um, favorite sneaker? Nike. Do you have any particular Nike? 
Um, this could be a tough one. I have some Jordans that I really like. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I understand are you, that. Are I, you I, a, I, are you like a sneaker head or? Um, now that I'm making more money, I am spending <laughs> it on sneakers. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, how about we'll keep on the the food trend. We, we know where to go for pizza, but um, if you are cooking, what, what's what's just a meal of choice other than Luminati's? <laughs> kind of boring just chicken rice and a, a vegetable probably ro broccoli okay I like uh, it. Oh, okay if you're not going to luminati's though um best place to eat in your opinion in chicago um i really liked abba restaurant it's like tapa style mediterranean food mm -hmm. and they have a beautiful rooftop um patio so if yeah if you're in chicago check that out what's it called abba abba a b a okay Nice. We will. Yeah, I like rooftop. I like Mediterranean. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, how about um, we'll put you on the spot? Best okay. player you have played with? I played with? Yes. Or against, how about? Um, I'll and we're recording this and putting it in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just um, that was hard. I just know going in 2019, my rookie season, being thrown into the pile of Julia Ertz, Sam Kerr. Um, that was, yeah. I mean, Sam is such a good forward. So yeah. constantly being, um, defending her was great. And then Julia, she's just such a leader. So that was really cool. Nice. nice. Uh, do you support a premier league team? Not really. I like, I just like to watch, I don't have like a go-to team. Um, I have, um, in college, I watched Tom Hotspurs a lot. We had to pick a team. So that's kind of carried into now that I watch. Um, and also I'll, I'll watch Liverpool too, but I'm not like a diehard fan. Yep. <laughs> are you, are you, what about other Chicago sports? Is that like a given? Yeah. yeah. I watch a lot of <laughs> Chicago sports. Um, you can ask Cubs, White Sox. I pick Cubs. Okay. Yeah. I like okay. it. I like it. Nice. And, and a Bears fan. Is that a, we haven't, not been big great, football. we haven't been great recently, but yes, <laughs> I am a Bears fan, but hopefully Re we'll get better. <laughs> Reluctantly admitting it, it sounds yeah, like. Right. <laughs> um, Laura, you want to wrap it up for us? Yeah, okay. So just a few, let's do two more, okay? okay. Best vacation you've been on? Greece. I went to Santorini with my family. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice. That does sound, okay, listen, we have Abba to go to. We got to go to Greece. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, and this is a little bit more to do with like game day stuff. Any pregame rituals? Outside um, of your coffee. Coffee, definitely. <laughs> at least one cup of coffee in the morning. Um, I just try to go on a walk as well, at least just a 15, 30 minute walk um, with my coffee in hand. Um, <laughs> I listen to music too, just a specific playlist that tries to pump me up. Um, and then I wear red pre-wrap, pre so that's kind of like a superstition. Nice. All right. Well, the, the coffee walk sounds relaxing, so that's a good sort of mellowing out before a game. So Yeah, and get uh, flowing so your legs are ready. Yeah. 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 I mean, anytime go. I do see uh, social media of the Red Stars, all of you, it is the coffee in hand. It Sir Gordon in particular, I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> game day. Yeah. Um, well, Kayla, we really appreciate you joining us and, and having a little bit of time to, to chat and um, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, we will take this show on the road one day, Lori, and we will get to Luminati's and, and ABBA and everything else. Uh, but Kayla, thanks for joining us on, on NWSL Live. Thank you guys. And when do you guys do take this on the road? Let me know. I'll take you to the best spots. Okay, perfect. Right, there we go. Go. This is awesome. Great. Locking you in. There awesome. we go. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we'll be right back, everybody. We'll bring your questions and we'll talk about the, uh, the weekend's matches that were. And uh, we'll be right back after this break.
everybody, welcome back to NWSL Live. I'm Jeff Kasouf, joined by Lori Lindsay, as always. And uh, thank you again to Kayla Sharples for joining us uh, for another chat. Appreciate the questions and um, please send them our way. We've got a, a brief segment here looking back at the week that was, uh, the weekend that was, and then, uh, as we said, international break upon us. So go ahead and party on that Saturday night, whatever you're going to do. Um, or just watch more soccer from somewhere else. <laughs> also, I feel like I'm always hungry after these shows too, Jeff, because we're always talking about people's favorite food. And <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we got to get to some of these places and um, I don't know, this this pandemic needs to go away, but um, that's that's for another day. Um, well, we're going to talk about results. We're going to lead off with um, Chicago, Houston, Red Stars 1-1 in Houston there with the dash and um, just had Kayla Sharples on, obviously, talking about briefly about that game anyway. Um and uh, just wanted to lead off too with um, condolences to, to Rachel Daly and, and um, her loss and, and that she announced uh, yesterday. Um, so, you know, we're thinking about her and, and uh, at this time, a you know, difficult time for her. Um, but Lori, um, Houston, you know, talking about them uh, a little bit here and, and we've got the highlights from, from the weekend. Um, a result where, you know, a game where we, we think, you know, the dash really needed those three points and another game where it just kind of came a little bit short. Um, Houston, you know, at one point I really felt like was a title contender. I'm not saying they're not, but um, still some things to figure out there for the dash. Yeah. And I even said this, I think in our broadcast a week ago when they played Orlando with the, for the CBS game. And, you know, they're an interesting team to me because they've had the most, Olympians on the team so there's there's not a shortage in the the quality of player that they have at this um at this club but it's just for some reason I think you know we got our hopes up too especially with how they performed a year ago at the challenge cup and how how they've come together collectively collectively as a unit um it was exciting to see this team build kind of a new culture new dimension to to the club and to the program and then we just have not seen it you know I feel like every game we're talking to James Clarkson. There's like, okay, we've got to get these three points. We've got to clean up some situations defensively. And I, you know, I don't think any, I think that's a million dollar answer, right? It's like, why is this the case? Where are they lacking? What's um, why are they conceding some of these goals and just not finishing it out, especially with the personnel? So, you know, I don't really have the answers. I just think that there's, there's this fire to really get the results seems to be missing. And um, you know, they also have had, you know, players in and out, just like everybody, but um, just can't really seem to get it turned around. And it'll be interesting, as we keep saying, five to six games left to go. And when points at a premium, they're definitely one of those teams. Yeah, I mean, a great ball there from Christy Mewis over the top for that goal to, to Rachel Daly to open yep. it for Houston. And, um, you know, I think it, it is, you know, something where um, I think at some point they, they really need to put a, a string of results together in Chicago, too. You know, it's a draw. It is. It's not a terrible run of form for the Red Stars by any means, but but similarly in a position where three points would go that much that much farther. And and you look at um, obviously OL Rain uh, three points by way of forfeit on this weekend, but putting together a string of actual you know not just results but victories. And now we see the Rain second in the table, and that's you know th there is a difference. Those two points they start to add up in such a weird and wacky and tight tight table. So. Um, both yeah. of these teams, I think, I think in some way disappointing for both is, is totally. probably. And, and I think you're exactly right, though, about Chicago. I think they've had a, a better run of play. I think they're finding their identity. It'll be interesting going forward with this international break to see, yes, um, Houston is playing um, um, this weekend. Tigres, yeah. Yep, exactly. So, however, though, you know, bringing in um, Abby Dahlkemper, even though she's not going to be there, it can they start to play like a different formation, maybe a three back, um, pushing more players forward. They definitely have to figure some things out because right now Rachel Daly is really the one that's finding the back of the net. So be curious to see how they kind of mix things up. James Clarkson did allude to some formation changes, but mm. always tough when there's an international break and you you lose players again. So yeah, <laughs> right back I to the starting point. <laughs> Three backs have been popping up here and there uh, over the past month or so at different teams. And uh, in some ways, uh, in some cases, very abruptly and impromptu, which has been um, not always, has not always worked, but it's, it's an interesting <laughs> miniature trend there that we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, Orlando, 3-1 victory over Louisville. Uh, Alex Morgan comes back four minutes in. She scores. Cindy LaRue again 
with a goal and assist, and I'll call it a quasi assist. It doesn't go down in the, in the score sheet as an assist, but um, you know, again, we've talked about LaRue quite a bit on the show, you know, I think has to be in the conversation for, for MVP as, as you, um, I think you called that shot at the beginning of the season, as we've said, but another big result for Orlando, I think you might've said it earlier, pride just aren't going away. Mm -mm. No, they aren't. And listen, you know, I think sometimes which makes them such an interesting team as well. And why this season has been wild is because, you know, early on we saw Sidney LaRue miss some pretty easy sitters here and then beat six players. That's a little bit of an exaggeration for her goal, but did everything that she could to make it difficult for herself and then finishes that one off. So, um, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting. I think, you know, some teams are rising to the occasion and with Alex Morgan, that's a huge lift for them. You know, one of the reasons why I had Sidney LaRue pegged early on as a um, one of the MVPs is because I thought she could really elevate herself and this Orlando pride during the Olympics when a lot of players were gone. Yes, she did do that, but they had some, co they had a coaching change obviously. And so I think there are some things, here's that goal that I was talking about. She's falling away and like, I mean, okay, we'll take it. Um, but I think actually, you know, she's had a little bit of a different performance where we hadn't seen up into this game, um, you know, her find the back of the net consistently, but with Alex Morgan back, I think that alleviates some of the pressure. I think you can start to look at some different groupings of Jody Taylor, her and Alex up top plus Marta. So I think we'll start to see her get back into a little bit of that form of finding the score sheet uh, more regularly now. Yeah, I, I think there was a, there is and has been, but, but we saw it again in this game, a relentlessness to how LaRue is playing. And that was seen, um, in the goal she scored, which we saw was basically off her own rebound, essentially how it played out. And then the assist that she had to Morgan um, and even the, the, you know, that quasi assist that I said to, to Marta, which um, we're about to see here was, you know, similarly just a, um, a, a will to not give up. And I, I think it was really coming through and, and Morgan's addition coming back scoring right away. I do think, you know, on the flip side of this, we haven't really talked about Louisville in that playoff picture, even though mm -hmm. it, it hasn't been totally out of the question, or at least it wasn't maybe a month ago. I think, you know, obviously it's, it's a real uphill battle, but some defensive questions in this one that I, I think even beyond the three goals, there was a lot of Orlando asked a lot of questions of Louisville's back four. Um, and, you know, look, Michelle Betos leads the league and saves that's, that's her facing that number of shots as well. So I think some things to figure out, you have Emily Fox, obviously, who's, you know, should be a long-term anchor, at least at fullback, but some questions to answer there for Louisville too. Yeah. And a uh, real bummer and um, to one of the league's favorites of Nadia Nadim going down with uh, ACL in this, in this game as well. So some woes going forward in the attack, but you're right. I don't think you can give up, you know, the upward side of 20, 25 shots a game and get yourself into the playoff position. This league is just too tight. So they will definitely have to kind of figure that out in a, in a, in a quick time, time frame if they are going to make that push. But um, still been an exciting year for them as a expansion team and kind of continue to find their way to bounce back at, at different moments. Yeah, and um, our, our, you know, our thoughts go out with Nadia and Adim as well with that, that ACL tear confirmed, and um, hopefully she can be back in time. I, I think it sounds like she wants to be for the, for the Euro next year. Um, and our third match of the, the day, um, of the weekend, excuse me, was Portland versus North Carolina, and you know, a, a very good one, a very highly anticipated one. Um, I, I think you know, the Thorns here, three points, I tweeted this, like, if the Courage had any thoughts of a fourth straight shield, they had to win this game. And even that, obviously, with the games in hand that Portland has, um, but a, a one no victory for Portland. First one in North Carolina for the Thorns, which I, I had not realized was, was pretty surprising. But, um, you know, I think this one, Lori, well, what did you take away from this one, Lori, first off? Well, I, I, I am impressed with Sophia Smith. You know, I think there was a lot of question marks about her, how she would continue to perform um, after not making the Olympic team. And and credit to her, she has been um, exceptional in so many ways. And um, especially as such a young player, not really having a season last year. In a lot of regards, you can, can call this her rookie year in terms of the longevity of the league and or the season, excuse me. And um, she continues to fight. And she's done a really good job, I think, in giving them a different look up top. Um, 
especially after some some injuries to some of their players like Morgan Weaver who had been out and um but I was shocked too I couldn't believe in terms of how tight this um rivalry has been this is the first win um at North Carolina um but you know what I think you know, it's exactly kind of what we've all been talking about. This has not been a consistent season for North Carolina whatsoever. You just really feel like they have not been able to like really get their solid, um, you know, footing underneath them mm -hmm. in terms of making some sort of statement in terms of a performance. It's been like, yes, I'll win a game and then it'll be like mm, lackluster performance and then, or something's off. Right. And even with a lot of returning players, um, yes, obviously still missing Sam Mewis, who is a key part. Right. I, I don't think that that goes unnoticed, but just haven't been the same um, team team that we've seen. And last thing I'll say about that is really, I think, you know, this is a team that's going to start, is starting to get older, right? This is a team that um, we've seen this group, um, but I don't think this is as good of a team as we've seen in the past um, from, from North Carolina. I mean, anytime that you're losing Kristen Hamilton, Crystal Dunn, right? Some of those players through the spine of your team, even if those trades make sense overall, it's going to be a huge loss um, in the immediacy of for any program yeah and in this matchup we see that direct parallel of yep. crystal dunn on the other side of the field and and missing from the courage I, I think i believe ali wagner made this point on the broadcast too but um you know the absence of abby dog as well in building out of the back for the courage that was a piece of that puzzle in in those previous years so um <clears throat> you know i think i think that's a big a big miss as well and mm -hmm. you know this is a courage team you're right i think they've had I thought in June that they had turned a corner and I'm not saying they haven't, but you're right. This is not necessarily, you know, you look at the shot distribution and how heavily, you know, three to one basically in favor of Portland, that's usually the reverse for the courage, even when playing Portland. So yeah. I thought they had some opportunities, you know, Lynn Williams, Jess McDonald each in the first half hour with essentially one V ones that, that didn't get converted. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that there were opportunities there, but not necessarily, um, as many as we're used to seeing, and obviously they didn't get finished. So um, mm -hmm. still some things to figure out for, for North Carolina. I think they'll be in the mix, but I guess we can end it on this, Lori. I mean, we should keep in mind as we're, we're getting closer, it's, it's no longer looking too far ahead. Top two seeds get a buy in this new playoff mm -hmm. format. And I think that's certainly helpful in this very long season. So, you know, North Carolina, even if that shield is out of reach, is really going to want that number two spot to have a home game go straight into a semifinal and avoid that play in round. Oh yeah. And honestly, when you start to get into playoffs, right, it's like a whole new season. So mm -hmm. if there's anybody not to count out, it's North Carolina. <laughs> Cause if there's going to be somebody jazzed up and ready to go, it will be Paul Riley's side um, for sure. But yes, you know, going into international break, obviously some players are going to be missing, um, but gives them some time to regroup and, and kind of shore some things up. Now you're going to have the team back together post, mm -hmm. a, post this um, window. Yeah. Well, that is all we have planned for you all on, on this uh, edition of NWSL Live. Appreciate you all joining us as always and hope you enjoy the international break. We'll be back with you in a bit. We'll be back with NWSL games the weekend after this coming one. So enjoy it however you please. And uh, we'll be back on NWSL Live shortly, once again soon. Thanks for joining us, Lori. Thanks. Good to see you as always. And uh, we'll, we'll get Jordan back in here as well in the near future. So um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, everybody.